Welcome back, everyone, to our 15-minute Resilient Mind and Body program. My name is Lance Breger. I'm the CEO and executive wellness coach at Infinity Wellness Partners, and I truly care about supporting your greatest health, life, work, and relationships. Resilience, it's endurance with direction. Endurance, to be able to move through hardship to become better and live and work in a new way. Your balance is intimately connected to your ability to, be, ability to be resilient mentally, emotionally, and physically. Why do you have a house plant pictured on the opening slide? Well, it's the perfect symbol for balance. I don't know about you, but if I give a house plant too much light and sun, what happens? What if I don't give the plant enough light or sun? What happens? How about water? Too much water. What if I don't give the plant enough water? What if it's in a too hot environment? Too cold environment? What we're showing you here is that it takes balancing and monitoring and change on a consistent basis to create balance. And you are a brand new, unique houseplant. And your needs for water, light, temperature are completely different than someone else. And getting clear on what you need and how to balance is most important. And one or the other isn't good or bad. It's about creating the perfect balance for you. Now, we become balanced when we are motivated. And oftentimes it's for others or something outside of ourselves that we're willing to make a change. To first become balanced, it's important to identify your inspiration and motivation. Who, what, or why is it worth getting balanced for? Who, what, or why is it worth getting balanced for? Knowing this answer is your true motivation and inspiration to create sustainable balance and remembering that every day, who, what, or why am I getting balanced today? And I'm going to take an action. And another great question to ask yourself every morning is, how can I better balance myself today? Or what can I do today to create more balance for myself? And go ahead and do it. Also, we want to know, like the house plant, when it starts to wilt, when you're becoming out of balance. We're going to use the red light indicating you're out of balance. Yellow light is a warning sign, I'm going out of balance. And green light means I'm balanced. Let's go through your balance signals. Let's start with green light. List at least one word of how you think, feel, work, or maybe something that you do when you're feeling balanced. How do you know? Write down green light, I'm balanced. What's the signal that tells you I'm balanced? I wake up with energy, might be an example. What's your yellow light? The warning sign saying, I'm moving in not an optimal direction. What's your yellow light? Are you starting to snooze? Do you have one more cup of coffee? Are you starting to get a little impatient? What's your yellow light saying, okay, it's time to slow down, let's balance. And what's your red light? How do you know when you are out of balance? What is the signal that says, red light, you're really out of balance right now, and it's time to accept the responsibility, let's move back in a different direction. What's your red light, yellow light, green light? When you catch yourself in the yellow light, then we practice the three R's of balance. First is we want to recognize, whoa, awareness, bing, I'm getting out of balance based on the signals that you just identified. Then is we want to remember, remember the motivation. Why, who, or what is it important to get back balanced for? Maybe it's our family, maybe it's our organization, maybe it's our community, maybe it's ourself. All we wanna remember why it's important to turn around and get back balance. And last R is rebalance, take an inspired action. Think about one thing, the most common thing that when you do it, helps to bring you back to your green light in balance. What's that one thing? More sleep, 
getting your workout in, slowing down in the morning. A couple of examples. You know and rebalance yourself with that action. Okay, now we're getting to real fun stuff. When I'm working individually with clients, we create a balanced baseline using the Wheel of Life. Now, if you'd like the Wheel of Life, you can go ahead and reach out to your point of contact and I will get the Wheel of Life and they can send it. You could also Google it easily under Google Images Wheel of Life as well. What we do is we rate each of these 11 life categories on a scale of zero, empty, to 10, full. Think of them as little gas tanks. How full are you in these different areas? For today in our time, I'd invite you to identify the lowest filled tanks, maybe two or three. When you look at it, you're like, oh, that's, that's low for me. There's no judgment there. It's awareness and an observation. Let's now take your low scores and let's now tell you what you do with them. So let's say you had low scores in spirituality, love and romance, contribution, recreation, fun, and health and fitness with these respective scores. What you wanna do is identify which categories do you feel that when you make an inspired action consistently and can not only raise your score, but can help you feel more balanced, more fulfilled, more relaxed, optimistic, and healthy and happy? For the example, this person chose love and romance and health and fitness. Now, assign one specific inspired action to do that will raise the love and romance score. The example that I'm sharing here is an evening gratitude practice before bed. Telling your partner, family members, pet, friends by phone what you're grateful for to express love and appreciation to raise that score or something that you love about that person. Number two inspired action would be health and fitness. Health and fitness could really raise my balance score out of these categories. Great. Now, what's going to be your inspired action that would raise the health and fitness score from a four and help you feel more balanced? Well, I can do a walk at lunch. Perfect. That is your inspired action. Now, I invite you to make that specific. What time exactly will you do it? How long will you do it? And any other steps that you need to do to make that walk successful. Beautiful. Now, let's get into yin and yang. Oh, such a beautiful philosophy for balance. It's literally the house plant. We have two different, we'll call them complementary and functional opposites that come from ancient Chinese philosophy and Eastern Chinese medicine. We have yin and yang. Yang is, if it's money, it's spending money. If yin is money, it's saving money. Yang is dry. Yin is wet. Think of the house plant. How much water? Feeling cooler or drier or wet. We have warm yang to cool yin. We have faster yang to slower yin. We have a masculine energy, which is got to get it done, making decisions, taking, uh, taking charge in control to feminine, more receptive, more connected to nurturing and emotions, intuition, holistic thinking. We have day, the sun, always on. Then we have yin, which is night or sleep. We have yang, industry, urban settings, to, and technology, to yin, nature, outdoors, we have language of yang, talking, chatting, always hearing noise, to yin, silence, quiet. Yang, fire, hot, caffeine, to yin, water. Now, where, which do you think category do professionals get burned out from? It's dominance and the yang. Too much dry, too much warm, too fast, too much daytime, too much technology, too much language, too much fire, too much masculine energy, 
So write down which two Yang characteristics are you most dominant in? Example, fast. I do everything fast. Breathe fast, talk fast, email fast, eat fast. And let's say daytime. I rarely unplug. I'm always on. I have very, very long days. Okay, perfect. Great. Now what we're going to do on the next slide is use the functional and complementary opposite to create balance for you. It's not saying that yang is bad or yin is good or vice versa. It's creating the balance between both of them that work best for you. So now take your yang dominant characteristics that lead to imbalance. And now let's create balance with them. So what's the complementary opposite? So let's say we said fast, well, or faster. Slower would be the characteristic. Now, what's the balancing specific action that you need to do? Where, how, and when, and during what can you slow down? Maybe it's slowing down your morning. Maybe it's slowing down in the middle of the day. Maybe it's slowing down with your yoga practice, your meditation. Maybe it's journaling or reading. Maybe having some quiet time. Get specific on that action. And when you identify that you're getting out of balance, you and you sense yourself moving really fast, now you know how to create balance. Such a powerful, simple, and effective strategy to create balance. And lastly, your values. When you live your values, you are living the factors that drive you. You're living what's most important to you. You are living what you stand for, what your essence of your life is, what you want to be remembered for. And you identify what your needs are. Wow. When you meet your needs, then you're able to sustainably meet others' needs. Let's now go through this great exercise that I take clients through. What are your time and schedule needs? When do you want to wake up? When do you want to start work? When do you want your first break of the day? When do you want to take lunch? What time do you want an afternoon break? What time do you want to stop working? What time do you want to go to bed? As an example of time and schedule needs. If you get clear on those, you can literally put them in your schedule and begin to make them happen. What are your physical health needs with exercise, with sleep, with the number and qualities of meals? What kind and quantity of beverages make you your best physically? And we want to do at least. So if you are thinking exercise really helps me, what number of exercises sessions per week at least can you get to be fulfilled? That's how you want to work slowly and add into your schedule. Now, what about your mental health needs? What are the things and activities that when you do help you be mentally your most resilient? Spending time in nature, journaling, prayer, meditation, reading, connecting. What about social needs? Speaking of connection with pets, with loved ones, family members, friends, mentors, colleagues, neighbors, children, grandchildren, extended family, virtual or in person at a safe distance. What are your social needs? How many social activities and what kinds do you need per day or per week to be your best and scheduling them? And then your family needs. How often and when do you need to be connected with your family and how? What are the most fulfilling ways of connecting with your family? Is it texting? Is it audio messages? Is it FaceTime? Is it dinner together? Um, is it writing letters, sending care packages? What is it? Now that you have all your needs, you can schedule them and you now know what to say yes and say no to. When you're not living your values, it's a recipe and formula for unbalance. We lose health, we lose happiness, we lose productivity, and we lead to resentment and extra stress. So there we go. Wow, any of these can already bring you into balance. First is remembering who, what, why is it worth to get balanced for every day and what and what and where you can become balanced. Remember your yellow and red light when you're getting and you're out of balance as the signals to pay attention to. Then practice the three R's. Recognize I'm getting or I'm out of balance. 
then remember why it's important to get back balance and rebalance yourself with that one inspired action that you know balances you. You could always use the Wheel of Life annually, quarterly, biannually. You can share it with family members and staff members and to check in to see what categories of life you may be low in or empty in that could help create more balance by taking inspired actions that would raise the scores. The yin and yang, the fast and slow, creating the balance between the complementary opposites. Remembering what your dominant yang energy out is and how to balance that with the yin. And finally, living your values when it comes to time, schedule, physical, mental, social health, as well as family. Now, what's the one action that you're gonna do until next week? One thing that you take away from this webinar, it's action consistently that creates transformation, not just knowing it and thinking it, it's actually in the doing. And what's the immediate action that you will do as soon as you log off this webinar? You have five seconds after you log off the webinar to take an inspired positive action, sending a text message, planning it, scheduling it. What can you do immediately to create a positive change? Thank you so very much for being here at our 15-minute Resilient Mind and Body program. I'm incredibly grateful that you took time to be your best self. And when you take time to be your best self, it has an incredible ripple effect across all of those that you are in connection, partnership, and relationship with. We will see you at our next program. Thank you so very much.